Over the last few days, everything in the news cycle and in social media is suggesting that the Toronto real estate market is in for a pretty rough ride this upcoming 2024, and things are gonna go from being bad to, I guess, being worse. When Remax, the largest real estate franchisor and arguably one of the biggest brands and advocates for strong real estate prices, when they go off and say GTA real estate prices are going to drop next year, as a realtor myself, my ears tend to perk up as these large real estate brands are almost always trying to push for higher confidence in the real estate market, which keeps their realtors busy. So when a big brand like this tries to get ahead of the news cycle, they're trying to stay trustworthy and even keeled because they truly believe that it's probably not going to be very good. And there's a lot of indicators for this as well. In my last market update, I talked about the upcoming $900 billion in mortgage renewals across Canada that will be upcoming over the next three years, of which 2024, for which I'm touting phase one, will see the lowest amount of only $186 billion. The majority of these 2024 mortgage renewals will be for homes purchased five years back in 2019 when the average home price in Toronto was a mere $883,000. And depending on how 2024 plays out and when we potentially start seeing rate cuts, maybe the end of 2024 or even later, 2025 could be far worse when renewals balloon to $315 billion. But before I continue talking about that, for those of you who are seeing my handsome face for the first time, my name is Jonathan Lee and I'm a Toronto area real estate agent based in Etobicoke. If you like Toronto and Etobicoke real estate content, click on subscribe and ring that bell for the privilege of seeing more of this handsome mug of yours on your YouTube feed. If you want to schedule a chat to talk about real estate, you can click on the calendar link below in the description. Now, before we talk more about what's hit the news cycle the past few days, let's go into what the Toronto real estate market looked like in November. Because believe it or not, seasonally adjusted, it wasn't worse in October. Contrary to what is being shown on social media with these drastic sales, properties are selling and the new standard for the fall market prices, it seems to have stabilized in November. Seasonally speaking, even in the best of times, November will usually be a lower performing month than October in both number of sales and average sale prices but sales and average prices took a lower than typical dip in November month over month. If you're selling a home or are planning on selling a home in the new year, as a seller, you have to be both patient and flexible, unless you have a very, very attractively priced home or have an absolute one of a kind stunner of a property. Listings aren't necessarily selling in a week. And in fact, you should be looking at the reality that you might be facing weeks, plural, on the market, and potentially maybe even months, especially if your property has some detrimental or less than desirable features with it. Listings that are livable and move in ready and have flexibility in meeting new market expectations are the ones that are selling. Stubborn sellers aren't really getting their way with prices unless again, they have a really, really unique and lovely property. Properties that also need a lot of work are also having difficulty moving unless they have a fair amount of flexibility in price. In an environment when finance is expensive and not readily available, there's a significantly smaller subset of buyers who are willing or capable to further access and borrow money to do work to a home. At the end of November, we saw months of inventory in the Toronto real estate market stabilize and even start to dip slightly in both the freehold and condo market segments. Months of inventory is a number of months it would take to sell off all the existing homes based on the rate that the homes are currently selling. Generally between three to five months of inventory, it's considered a balanced market. Five plus months of inventory, it's considered a buyer's market and under three months is a seller's market. Seasonally speaking, we expect to see fewer listings come to market towards the end of the year and fewer sales to occur in December as everyone, both buyers and sellers, they tend to focus on the holiday season. If we do see an increase in listings or an increase in deals made, that's going to be an indication of market confidence. More listings means sellers are generally pessimistic of home prices in the future, so they wanna sell before they drop. And more sales means buyers are expecting home prices to rise in the near future, so they wanna get ahead and buy when it's cheaper. Generally, the new year resets the market where a large set of new buyers come out as they resolve to move or to buy a home in the next three to six months, a time when typically in a rising market, we see the largest price gains. The potential upside for sellers to wait for the spring market is pretty big. We see price gains almost every year, even this past 2023. I don't know if we'll see the same price gains in 2024. If we do, it will likely be location and neighborhood specific, but the spring market is rarely worse than the previous fall market. So as a seller, if you can afford to wait, 
it's usually worth it. As such, the stabilization and slight dip of months of inventory going into the late fall, it lines up with seasonal expectations. And I don't think we'll see another rise in inventory until we hit January. So the other day I went to a birthday party for a child in my toddler's daycare and I met a couple sets of new parents for the first time. I met this interesting family who had recently spent a year living on a boat in the Caribbean and another international family originally from Asia. And they both remarked at how miserable Toronto has become. We all feel it. But it was interesting with these parents and how quickly the conversation drifted into the possibility of leaving Canada and living elsewhere. I mean, don't get me wrong, there isn't a country in the world that hasn't been affected by inflation and the rising cost of living and is feeling no pain. But if you have ties to other countries in the world or you've traveled in the last couple of years, you've probably seen that we here in Toronto and likely through most of Canada are feeling a lot of pain. And these graphs, they depict that pain pretty well because contrary to the US, our economy is actually shrinking and has been for five straight quarters or nearly a year and a half. On a per capita basis, our GDP dropped 3.7% in Q3, which means we spent and circulated 3.7% less money per person last quarter. Our disposable income has come down to pre-pandemic levels, which is crazy because with the inflation, we need to spend a lot more money to get the same that we got in 2019, which is of course all correlating to a drop in our standards of living. Now. A lot of you are gonna be quick to point the finger at a high interest rates and at how much needs to be deployed into debt servicing, of which no doubt this is a key contributor to the drop that we're experiencing in disposable income. But the reality of our lower standard of living is it's probably a mix of about a half a dozen or so factors that are affecting it, especially at a macro level. There's the rise in unemployment, which rose 80 basis points from April to October. The Canadian press recently published a list of companies that laid off Canadian employees, and there's a big mix of retail, tech, media, and financial organizations, including TD and Scotiabank. Interestingly, I heard an analyst remark on a recent podcast that even though banks are still profiting from rising rates with variable rate holders, they're laying off employees because they're preparing to write off bad debts in the near future, planning for the next three years of mortgage renewals and are trying to become more efficient today so that they avoid going into the red tomorrow. There's a massive amount of savings being dropped into debt. Steve Suretsky recently sent this out on his latest report, but banks are reporting drops in the number of mortgages with negative amortization. A negative amortization is when your mortgage repayment period gets extended because your mortgage payments aren't enough to service both the interest and principal. So more borrowers are converting their variable rate mortgages to fixed rates. At the same time, they're deploying more cash to pay down their debts. So consumer credit in Canada has now slowed to its weakest pace in 30 years. There's also the rise in visa holders like students and new immigrants who spend money meeting basic needs like housing, food, and transportation, all of which contribute to a rise in total national GDP or money spent nationally. But these newcomers, they don't contribute to productivity. So this results in a drop in per capita GDP. So the result is we didn't see a December rate hike and we're pretty unlikely to see any more Bank of Canada rate hikes with many expecting rates to drop sometime in the not too distant future. Some economists and analysts are saying rates might start dropping as early as mid-2024, and others are saying it might not be until 2025. But this all means if you're up for a mortgage renewal, you probably shouldn't take the five-year fix, which will be hard because it will probably be the best rate available. Now, the wild thing with all of this is if the U.S. continues to raise rates, which is a possibility as their economy seems to be performing pretty well and the Bank of Canada holds rates flat or even drops them, we'll end up seeing a depreciation of the Canadian dollar, which will raise the price of imports, which is like 70% of all goods we consume because we don't produce much here in Canada. This will further result in a rise in the cost of living and of course, inflation. So we're sort of damned if we do raise rates, people will definitely lose their homes and damned if we don't raise them or drop them as we'll solidify inflation. But this is maybe another big reason for why housing and shelter costs need to come down here in Canada unless new buyers on the market are fine living off bread and water for the rest of their lives. So that's it for me this video. Again, my name is Jonathan Lee and I'm a Toronto area real estate agent based out of Etobicoke. If you wanna get in touch, you can click on the calendar link below to schedule a chat. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Cheers.